Fantastic. Hello, guys. Uh, thank you for coming. So we'll start our presentation. My name is Andrei Bagrichuk. I'm senior CGI specialist in design department of Škoda Auto Company, where we're producing cars. And we're even going to talk today about cars. Yeah, what a surprise. A guy from automotive industry talking about automotive industry. Yeah. Before we even start, important information. Blender is a fantastic tool that gives us a possibility to do pretty much everything we imagine. And probably you already know it, yeah. Nevertheless, I'm going to prove it once more, this time, from the side of automotive design and content creation for this field perspective, yeah. For make it proof, I'll tell you a story. How we managed to build a hypercar in Škoda, completely from scratch. 98% of the project happened in Blender, and this car later ended up in legendary racing simulator. Everything in super short time and with a lot of fun. Yeah, so let's get to it. What you see right now on the screen, this is a fantastic Škoda Vision Gran Turismo, which Škoda presented a few months ago in the Gran Turismo racing simulator. Fun fact about it, we call it lunchtime project internally because what you see right now on the screen began just like a few sketches along the pizza time from designers and later through whole passion, power, knowledge of our incredible team to in the end happened in Gran Turismo Racing Simulator and that was work of whole team for proof it should actually happen there. Because thinking about it, yeah, few sketches along the pizza break and car in racing simulator series, it's quite big, yeah. And the task was as extremely ambitious that the only way to do it was to streamline a process quite a bit, quite significantly in the end. So classical content creation pipeline wasn't work anymore for us. When I mean classical pipeline, I mean that's usually how we imagine it, yeah? Uh, we have some pipeline, some task along, and we use the best software for each task. So we're tracking here, shading there, modeling uh, somewhere else, and combine everything, whoa. And combine everything on the composting stage, which is perfectly fine and give fantastic result in the end in terms of content creation where is actually content creation a core of the task. But in design, it's not about content only. It's about design. And we, as a CGI team, support and help to shine this fantastic design decision that came from the side of designers. So basically what we do is that we model a car and then we present it. And then we take feedback about our job from our design leaders, make it changes, and present it again. And along this loop should happen technical renders, beauty shots, beauty animation, storytelling animation that help to show this fantastic feature designers delivered on the car. And this loop we repeat again and again and again. So this back and forth process should be as convenient and efficient as possible. And we dreamed back then about actually something like one software that can handle everything, yeah? Potentially, fantastic software that can fit all our requirements existed. Yes, which one, yeah? <laughs> Blender for sure. And, but that was only, I'm sorry, come on. Yeah, uh, but that was only a beginning of the challenge because the point was, is one thing to adopt new software for the team. Second thing, to build a whole pipeline with the core of this software. And at the same time, to build a hypercar from the scratch. Yeah, uh, What was back then as unique that through whole how a history of brand, which is more than 125 years, never happened before. Yeah, Sounds easy. What can go wrong along the process? So challenge was accepted and journey started. And this is pretty much a roadmap. We're gonna go together with you step by step together, uh, today. 
So there will be a part about philosophy of content creation because how is our philosophy? Uh, we'll define the task together. We will work with the design inputs together. Uh, define a visual concept together. Storytelling stage together. Uh, research and development plus problem solving because tell me which project just going smooth all the time and composting in the end for sure. And I believe these insights we collect along establish our pipeline will be helpful for anyone who work with extremely heavy data, big environments, and who need to constantly present result of their work somehow. Yeah. Uh, additionally, you can analyze all our steps and not make mistakes that we was into back then. Yeah. Uh, so let's jump to it. Beginning philosophy. So since previous methodology didn't work too much for us, and we actually quite fastly recognize that there is no point to transform or try to transform Blender into anything which we used before. That was clear that we should find a new way, or actually Blender way, to make a design and CGI content for it, or as we call it inside a Blender a recipe for CGI content creation, yeah? And uh, before we actually jump to our storytelling journey, let's talk about a bit of theory, theory. So, true is that no matter what software do we use, the foundation always the same. I mean, universal principles like composition, lenses, scenography, applicable everywhere. And by combining these basic principles, we can make an object in frame feels really heavy and powerful or mysterious. We can highlight some, you know, bold design features that designers wanted to implement for tell a story of this particular geometry in the frame. Or we can go completely other way. So it's still the same geometry, but completely different feelings, you know? And uh, we can go even further. So imagine some cable which is plugged to the car. Special energy goes through this cable. And in the end of the day, it's not car anymore, it's Christmas tree. Which wishing, you, uh, wishing you Merry Christmas, yeah? Uh, what I wanted to say here, that, you know, in the end of the day, doesn't matter which software you use. What is important is the story that we wanted to tell. And the way how we see and how we deliver a feeling. And in the end, does it matter even how much cores in your processor or GPUs you have under the hood, yeah? Which is really more important is these basics. After we agreed on it, yeah, um, our roadmap will go to nowhere if you don't know what is a target. So this is a target. This is our target. Uh, this is a shirt. A teaser that we use for reveal a car, yeah. And we will go through all our steps today for uh, today for actually break it down this teaser and the things that we wanted to establish along doing on it, yeah. For some reason, our sound disappeared. Who knows why? So, fantastic, good. This is our target. Now, step by step. Roughly. The project was truly unique because the only task for content was pretty much simple. To show a car without showing car. Fantastic. Basic teaser story, nothing special. But additionally for it, after all briefings, meetings and so on, we found out that it should look, actually content for it, should look cool, nice, bold, or as we call it inside, proper vroom vroom content, yeah? <laughs> so. Second part of our journey, second step, that's actually working with design inputs, which was a true pleasure. Because this fantastic masterpiece was created by our superheroes from design department, our designers. And the, right now you look to the people who make dreams come true. And thanks to them, we have this delightful car in existence. So this applause go to them, yeah, please. They make a fantastic job. Thank you. And next step of our journey, this is actually usually super intensive because it is a moment that we ask question, what if a lot of times? I mean, what if our picture should be in low key or high key? Should it be more bold and you know stable or it should be more dangerous? 
uh, how colors will work with our car and behaves, yeah? And how colors will help to our story actually shine properly. And definitely five minutes before the time border for this stage, you start to thinking, hmm, maybe let's put some, a bit Iron Man feeling there, why not? And after we establish a feeling and the visual key for it, we jump to our next stage, which is storyboarding. Uh, storyboarding we do usually in old fashioned way, so paper and the pen, sometimes 2D on the computer, sometimes we make it in 3D. It doesn't matter in the end because the only thing which is important here is to define an entire story, that's one thing, and the order of shots, how we imagine it. Next part. Finally, it's in 3D. Yes, it's working, it's moving. Uh, with one VPS of viewport feedback. Imagine how big pleasure will be to actually polish your animation with, with one VPS, yeah? Uh, so we need to solve it. Probably it will be uh, not a pleasure to uh, work on it. And, you know, our data was extremely heavy because that was extremely high quality. I mean, the only car and the wheels cost three gigabytes file in Blender, thinking about it. Nothing happened yet and it's already three gigabytes, yeah? So how we can work around it? Using proxy, obviously, yeah? But proper way of proxy. So instead of simulate in real time dynamic of the car in each frame, we'll bake it to simple cube, thank you, and four cylinders, uh, which is work immediately and give us a possibility to work way, way more efficient then instead of using this heavy geometry, which is thousand and thousand pieces, we just divide it to different collections, uh, instance them again to the scene and connect to this original you know, box and the cylinders. So in the end of the day, magic happened, 25 FPS, good. But this is good because we are now talking only about car, but in front of us are volumes, environment, details, and so on. We activate them, and of course, FPS is dramatic, it's three now, cool. Uh, what we can do with it? So obviously that we will put our volumes into the VDB sequence, instant them to the scene, so it automatically helps a lot. Details of the scene that we have on the road, uh, we'll solve via camera cooling, so only what we see in the camera will be activated, good. And since on all our volumes are baked already, we can afford frame dropping. So we have solid, fantastic 25 FPS and we can polish our animation. Good. Next stage, that's actually polishing. So we defined all the shots. Uh, we actually should be sure that between all shots, uh, cuts working properly, dynamics working properly and so on, we apply our visual key from previous stage that we defined and we are ready to click render button. Yes, good. And composting. After we render everything, I love this part the most, just because, you know, everything what we imagined before and what was in our hearts, finally we can see on the screen. Uh, this is classical multi-layer composting story. Nothing special here, we're just tweaking here and there for achieve desired look. Nice practice will be actually to define a lens, I mean the camera, uh, the camera sensor and the lens in the beginning of the project so we can make few shots and these shots will guide us along the composting process so we can grab from the grain, uh, you know, character of chromatic aberrations, lens distortion, we can make CST map if we have enough parallax in the frame. All these things will help to improve photorealistic feeling of the shot. But I think that this is a nice moment to say that really best content is not the most realistic one sometimes. It's one that fits to the idea and tell a story. I mean, in our case, designers imagine that this, this desert where everything happened, it's actually a planet, which the only reason for is that players will join with their cars on this planet and they will use this planet for racing only. Yeah? So that was about game, 
and as you see in the end, we avoid volumes. We avoid work with these composting tricks that I'm talking about just because the reason for this particular story and this particular feeling that I'm talking about was that it should be a game and it should feel as a game, yeah? And this is our last slide. As you can guess, in the end, it happened. Škoda Vision Gran Turismo was made fully from the scratch. 98% of the project was happening in the blender and later end up in Gran Turismo Racing Simulator that was presented. You can play, of course. I highly invite you. Uh, it's really a fantastic feeling. Uh, we'll produce, uh, we produced all necessary content for it and we found a fantastic tool for us uh, that we will use years and years in future. Now, I highly recommend you to follow our social media, all our social media and the design department particularly. Yeah. And I extremely thank you for your attention. <laughs> now, I believe that we have a few minutes for questions, if you have one. How does it work, guys? One, two, three, one, two, three. No? One, two, three. Fantastic. So I can uh, currently play with this car in Gran Turismo 7. Yeah. Oh, cool. Right now. Very good. <laughs> On PS5 with the VR, with everything all possible, is beautiful. Everything what you can imagine to do in the game, just come back to home, download it. I, I got it. something to do when I come back. Thank you. <laughs> what about the uh, 2%? You mean? You said 98%? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, like, uh, we make proper calculations. That was difficult calculations. And we found out that after whole project, we still used a coffee machine for making a coffee, so not blender, yeah. <laughs> and I believe everyone here will agree that coffee is important thing that helps whatever project happened in the end, yeah. So this is a reason of 98%. Yeah, anyone else? <laughs> is it rendered using cycles or a different engine? Yeah, here that was cycles. Uh, for pre-production, we use EV with uh, new fantastic feature of race tracing. It helps a lot. And uh, later cycles with composting and with a few little features that I can say later. Yeah, because there are a lot of details about it. Uh, was this car designed with uh, production ready uh, kind of like aesthetic or was it just like it should look good? Uh, both, yeah. Uh, the point of this car was that it was made in the way with our fantastic team of Škoda Motorsport where guys actually working on the uh, technologies that are directly used in motorsport every day. So the idea was the design department deliver a geometry based on some requirements, what is usual requirements for hypercars. And uh, Škoda Motorsport deliver all under the hood story. So this is the reason why it's as heavy because each detail is real. So that was developed in a way that later in the simulator, you know, point is that Gran Turismo is a simulator. So each detail was animated properly and then put all necessary elements for actually calculate physics of the car properly. And this is the reason why I highly recommend to try it in the game because the feeling of this car is completely different, that was for me, uh, than whatever else I tried before to play inside. Yeah? So yeah, that was real car pretty much, which is just in the end end up in Gran Turismo. Uh, during the design development process, have you guys experienced to review the car in, like, in VR or, or purely on screens? Uh, there was a particular video where probably you recognize that there is huge screens and designer stock on front of these screens. So we use it in a way that our design, we 
analyze on front of our design leaders in huge screens that give you a possibility to have a car one-to-one -one with real car. So it gives us, you know, this freedom that we are sure that if this shape looks properly, it definitely looks properly and uh, nothing else can happen in the future. So yeah, this pipeline of one-to-one -one story on huge screens is, this is the way how we use it. Of course we use VR, yeah and a lot of other technology, but this one is the main one. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Did you test it also other render engines like Octane or V-Ray? And where do you find the advantages of uh, cycles? Yeah, uh, it's uh, there are fantastic render engines around, all of them. They uh, give you fantastic result. For now, we're using uh, cycles only storing, uh, just because you know it's reliable, it's fast. Mm, the point of our process is actually, you know, not using render engine just for using render engine, but be as efficient as possible. And as I told, these back and forth, you know, changes should be as fast and convenient as possible. So cycles give us this possibility that, you know, you're doing everything directly in Blender, you're shading everything directly in Blender, you render everything directly in Blender. You even compose sometimes fully in Blender. Uh, mainly no, but yeah, the point is, <laughs> Uh, no, Blender have fantastic. Uh, Blender has fantastic, you know, composer built in, and uh, these last updates of real-time composting help our process a lot. Just we didn't find yet some, you know, special add-ons or plugins that are usual for us to use, and how to implement them in Blender. If we found a way, that will be all-in-one solution, and we're actually dreaming about it. Uh, how did you animate the car movements? I mean, the wheel rotation, the suspension work, did you make it manually or you use some add-on to do it more easily? We use fantastic uh, add-on which is called launch control. Probably you heard about it, yeah. And uh, it helps a lot that give us all necessary features. But of course, sometimes for a reason of art directing, uh, we do it manually just because we, you know, we imagine some fantastic camera and some fantastic angle and it should work only this way and we don't care about physics. And yeah, in the end, sometimes it's fully manual, but mostly, mainly, we simulate dynamics properly with geometry nodes and so on. Thank you. Uh, do you reuse materials and if so, uh, how, what's your structure for it? Do you use the uh, asset library? And how do you deal with the known issue of material duplicates in Blender? That's actually a really nice question because, you know, materials in automotive industry should fit at some standards. Uh, there's a pipeline behind how should look sparkles, clear coat, all these fantastic layers that give us a proper feeling of car paint and other metals. Uh, which is nice that last days was implemented in Cycles support, uh, I believe it's 4.3 version, that it finally supports proper metallic EOR, uh, you know, data. That helps a lot. But generally what we make, that uh, everything was built from the scratch. So we have our internal library that we use for all the projects and modify them as much as we need on certain uh, projects. What I should say that, you know, in the end, we found out that the most efficient story to work with materials is to actually work with material that was made by us just because we understand each particular, you know, smallest detail of the material instead of guessing, okay, I move this slider, it happened nothing. Why this slider is here? Uh, what happened for us too in the past? Thank you for the question. Anyone? Good. Then, thank you a lot for your attention. Wish you a fantastic day on the Blender Conference.